Okay, I'm going to talk about the differences between block training methods and random training methods or block training methods versus variable training methods. Training athletes under the block training model is where you take an activity such as shooting a basketball and you work on shooting foul shots for five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes straight. Random or variable training for basketball players is taking different shots, a shot from the foul line, a shot from the left, a shot from the right, a shot from the bottom of the baseline. Examples of block training and random training methods can be useful for tennis, can be useful for soccer. But the question remains, when you have limited time in your practice session, what is the best method for your athlete to practice in preparation for the game? Most of the science and most of the data that studies block training versus random training usually tells us that random training is better for the athletes. They usually say that variable training is better for in preparations for games. I would like to offer my viewpoint of block training versus random training as it applies to the baseball and softball hitters. Number one, for the hitter who is first being introduced to the game, random practice, variable practice can become challenging for these athletes. When a new player just learning the game has to learn how to react to fast pitching, slow pitching, outside pitching, inside pitching, high pitching, low pitching, these variables, these random response factors and demands become too complex. Just the opposite of a new player, you have an experienced player. When you practice the same pitch right down the middle for 15 minutes straight or for 10 minutes straight, it becomes too easy. And inside the easiness, they become mindless as they perform the practice. So where is a good balance point? Is there a correct way to modify the training in so that you get block training blended with variable training. You do block training in conjunction with random training. And this is probably the method of most coaches, but it's not really fully labeled this. It's not identified, hey, we're doing block training with a modification of random training. So again, most studies of block training will have the athlete perform the same skill. Maybe a tennis player is working on a shot down the baseline over and over again for five straight minutes. What's the value of that? Well, the value of that goes back to the, the functions of the brain. Simply put, the brain is memorizing the actions you're performing. The brain is memorizing the neural patterns of how to get the brain to fire an impulse through the central nervous system into the muscles and direct the limbs to a certain place to hit a certain spot on the court. Block training helps the brain to memorize these neural patterns that as an athlete you want to perform over and over again and then suddenly you want to be able to perform these same patterns when under pressure. You want to be able to remember these patterns when you're put into these situations where you suddenly have to react. When a brain visually reads and interprets a pattern that's about to take place and they're in a pressure environment, the brain knows how to repeat this and recall the response that you trained it to do because you did it under block training over and over and over again. When asked to perform an elite level, whether you're studying for a test and you have to memorize facts, when you say them over and over and over again in certain patterns, it's easier to recall these this bits of information when you're required to answer it on a test. When a musician is trying to master a certain portion of a song, music, that is written and performed from the audience and they get stuck in the middle of this song. They don't need to play the beginning over and over again and then the ending over and over again. They just sit and work on the middle portion which gives them trouble and they do it in block training over and over and over again. Now back to baseball and softball. This is where the advantage of block training helps players who have trouble hitting the outside pitch. If you give the hitter a chunk full of outside pitches, you are now in essence helping the hitter to learn how to react to a certain space in the strike zone. 
in a modified block training setting, you can tell the batter, listen, I'm gonna give you a chunk full of outside pitches, maybe 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 in a row. But the purpose of doing this chunking or block training consecutively is to train the brain to memorize that space so that when you are placed in a pressure situation, a random situation, it's volatile and you don't know what's gonna happen. As soon as your eyes visually see the ball is going to be entering the outside space, now the brain has recall, has the ability to remember, hey, this is how I respond to that particular space. If you are constantly, randomly reacting to high, low, in and out, it's harder for the brain now to collect memory for a particular space and the reaction that you want to achieve optimally for that space. So after you've done it between 10 and 40 or 50 times, then you can move to another space and then go back to the space you originally started at. And once the brain has received a chunkful or a bowlful of these spaces or pitches that you particularly want to work on, then you move into a random or variable practice setting. Let me end by saying this. Average hitters practice until they get it right. Elite hitters practice until they can't get it wrong. Here are some elite performers. Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, Steph Curry, Tiger Woods. It has been well documented in the press and media that players like Kobe Bryant, when they missed a particular shot in the game, a critical shot in the game, they would go back to the court after the game or early in the next morning and specifically work on that shot that they messed up on. It has been recorded and documented when Tiger Woods missed a particular shot in Augusta and came in second place. He went and worked on the shot that he messed up on for a full year in preparation that if this shot comes up again in this event, I'm gonna be ready to master this shot. I'm gonna nail it. And sure enough, this particular shot that he worked on for over a year actually came up in his PGA Tour event and he actually won the event based upon that particular shot. Let's translate this back to a baseball or a softball hitter. If Kobe Bryant is a baseball hitter and he's playing in a game and he struggles with a low outside fastball or a curveball low and away, guarantee Kobe Bryant is going into the batting cage after the game and he is specifically going to work on that low and away pitch over and over and over again. So I ask you this question, why isn't your player doing the same thing? Specifically practice that same area, the same pitch over and over again with block training. It really is time to join our community. Utilize a modified block training model while learning our hitting concepts. The 6.0 Best Hitting Drill Ever online hitting series offers our most current hitting research and consider working with us face-to-face -face at our baseball school located in Anna, Texas, where you can schedule a FaceTime call or a Zoom call hitting appointment. This is Dave Kirilov, languageofhitting.com.